If you haven't noticed, the stock market has fallen fast from its highs just a few weeks ago. The month of September has been absolutely brutal. Stock market historians are gonna say, I told you so. On average, since 1950, September has historically been the worst month of the year for stocks. Why? Old timey people say it's because money managers come back from their summer vacations and they finally get around to selling all those things that they were thinking about selling. Which maybe in a pre-iPhone world, that explanation would make sense. To me, it makes zero sense today, but it is a trend that still seems to happen. And this year, there are several real concerns on the horizon that have people selling. Things like we're entering the flu season and we still haven't conquered that other deadly virus. Cases are on the rise in countries around the globe. The Fed says we need more stimulus, but nobody in Washington seems to be working on that. And the 2020 election could be chaotic and contested. And I don't recall a president ever in history saying that there won't be a transfer of power but this is 2020. We also have the money printer going at full speed and zero interest rates and no plan to turn that off for years and a president who uses the stock market as an approval rating. So with those two things, it doesn't seem like a great idea to bet against stocks either. So today on Dumb Money, we're gonna figure it all out. We're gonna solve the world's problems or at least figure out what we're going to do with our portfolios as we brace for the possibility of a cold winter crash. <laughs> This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean, streaming live on YouTube. We are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. This is Dumb Money Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for watching us today. If you haven't smashed the like button, you should do it now. It does bring you good luck in your investments, or at least it lets YouTube know that we made a video. Chris, Jordan, have your portfolios taken as big of a hit as mine this month? Uh, a little, Jordan, how about you? You're like, you're anything on your portfolio or are you still riding pretty smooth? What do you mean anything in my portfolio? I so mean, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I feel like your portfolio was so well balanced that I think that you could. Yeah, I mean, it, it's down. Not... I just don't freak out, right? So um, I keep, I keep myself um, with a little bit of cash so that uh, I can buy some of these dips. So I'm not really that worried about it. Have you gone in and bought um, the dips? I did. I have. Yeah, I bought. Um, like I said, I bought some Vista Outdoors. I bought more Peloton. I bought. Um, Man, I forgot what else. I bought I bought like some uh, um, some 5G play stocks. I don't remember exactly what I did. Um, and I bought some Nvidia. Um, yeah, just just some just some basic things. But yeah, I mean, I'm down overall in this. What we're down like 12, 15 percent. My entire portfolio is down like seven. That's dude, Jordan. You said you said Vista Outdoors. I got to read you this text from my good buddy Patrick. Patrick, if you're watching today. Um, he sent me this text yesterday. Uh, did you know that people line up every Wednesday and Friday early in the morning at Academy Sports in order to buy ammo? Those are the days ammo is delivered to Academy and they sell out in 30 minutes. He said, I've seen them out before, so stopped and asked about it today. I guess ammo companies are still a buy. Dude, so are these, are these hunters or is this everybody, you think? No, it, it's hunting season, right? It's, every, it's, every, it's people that are worried about a civil war. Yeah. It's hunters. It's people that are worried about rioting in, the, in their neighborhoods. I mean, rationally or rationally, it doesn't really matter, right? People are buying ammo. Jordan, I have more Vista Outdoors today, too. Yeah. Um, I bought uh, more Tesla. I, as you know, I already told you guys, I lost $150,000 on Tesla calls this week. Thank goodness for Trevor. For Travis at Nicola because I made a hundred seven thousand dollars. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Miller. and buying puts on Nicola, so that saved and my. Formerly with Nicola, um, or, as we, as we <laughs> formerly. <say. laughs> um, you know what else I made a tiny bit of money on? I'm really proud of myself. I got in really quick. It was a quick social arb trade. Uh, I traded the Wells Fargo PR mess yesterday, so I actually bought puts on Wells Fargo yesterday and got out of them. Now uh, look at that morning. stock chart. Isn't that, don't you want to buy that dip? <laughs> well, I mean, dude, the CEO basically came out and listen, I know I put a tweet out about this. And I didn't realize when you tweet something that has any element that touches the racial divide in this country that it was going to spawn like 50 comments. I essentially said that the CEO of Wells Fargo, it was a really bad mistake for him to 
say what he said in the way that he said it. Now, you can, you know, you could say whatever you want about what he actually meant, but he makes $23 million a year. And when you make $23 million a year in 2020, words matter. And you better know how to either choose your words wisely to understand the implications of your words or spend some of that $23 million on a personal publicist or someone that's yeah. going to read Just every proof. Well, here, yeah, and here's the secret about these, about, these, uh, about these things. It's not a secret what they're going to ask. You know the types of things that they're going to ask you. And so you need to be prepared ahead of time and have a reasonable response. What he said was not a reasonable response. You know, have you ever made $23 million a year for being, you know, having that expertise and having, you know, being a CEO caliber person for a $100 billion company? I don't know if it's worth it or not, but if you're making $23 million, aren't you going to go the extra mile, especially when it comes to corporate communications in 2020, to make sure you don't mess up like that? I'm sorry. I, it's ridiculous. It's not just corporate communications. I mean, this is live broadcast to America. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, this is... Uh... You're right in front of um, our nation's leader. I mean, it seems like I an easy enough problem to have solved. He just didn't. Yeah. He, he need. He he just needed to have someone like proofreading his uh, brain before yeah. he spoke. So I I checked there there were there, there already was some kind of boycotting Wells Fargo buzz going around yesterday. Listen, I knew that it was going to be a down day for them. I, I got those puts. I'm out of the puts now. It was a short trade. I think I was up like fifty percent, sixty percent of the puts. Not crazy. But it was a nice, it was a really nice trade. And I, Jordan, I'm so glad you got more Vista because I love VSTO, man. I honestly, I think today's episode, when we we'll get into this, it's not about market crash yeah. in terms of the whole market's going to crash. No, but I actually want to go I, through my portfolio kind of stock by stock and see what you guys think because, you know, unlike you, Chris, I'm concentrated in a dozen stocks. Amazon, Tesla, Apple being the majority and then GAN and restoration and wayfair docusign nvidia those those kind of stocks i i like i like my uh, portfolio what do i do to protect myself and that that's kind of what i want to get into and the the chat says you you need to stop shaking your camera chris you're giving everyone sorry any seizures sorry. I, i'm not using my real camera today guys because i'm having issues uh yeah, I agree, Dave. It's about winners and losers. I think there will be a crash in some stocks this fall and winter, and that's what we're going to talk about on this show today. Yes. And I think other stocks will benefit. But at first, remember when it crashed back in the spring? At first, everything just kind of comes comes down yes. until we can kind of think more clearly, right? So I think today's episode is about is about like, do what we always do as social arm investors. It's all about modeling, right? looking at the scenario, scenario modeling and the implications of each scenario, and then preparing your portfolio. And by the way, when we talk about this, we're not financial advisors. We're going to go over strategies and techniques that we're using. Feel free to learn from them and apply them as you think you see fit for yourself with your own financial advisor, but do not do what we do. This is about educating yourself about our strategy of social art. That's it. And if you take a step back when the market did crash to those lows in March, it did this crazy kind of recovery. And even after we've pulled back as much as we have, this is the, uh, the S and P 500. Um, we're still up 45, 50% from those lows. So it's, you know, this, this is healthy. This is the kind of thing we look for. And this is a, a time to go buying, you know, I, I'm, I'm wanting, I wish I had saved a little bit more cash on the sideline like Jordan so that I could just go buy more Amazon. And maybe I should have sold some of the Tesla before battery day, but I still love Tesla as a long-term 10-year vision company and Apple the same way. And yeah, all these stocks Dave, are on I mean, sale that's, now. That's where I'm different from you. So like, I love Tesla, the company, love it. Love it, Dave, I love it. <laughs> I just don't like Tesla, the investment. I don't see the stock doubling over the next you know, two or three years. So I, I don't have any business being in it. Jordan, I, I understand what you're saying, but honestly, you could have made that same exact argument for Amazon. You could have made the same argument for other companies like Lululemon. And I, I think Tesla is a company that is such an aspirational company uh, that assuming, listen, I honestly don't think it's ever going to trade at the right value for anyone. It's always going to trade ahead of itself. Now we can debate how far ahead of itself it will trade, but if it's always trading five to six years ahead of itself, that means five years from now, it might not be trading at what it should be five years, but it's going to be trading on five years from then. Does that make sense? 
So yeah, I mean, it really just depends on how this. It really depends on what comes together for the company, right? So correct. if so, if there's because right now, and I don't really think they're selling this dream. I think there are people selling this dream for Tesla. Is that it's this um, it's this whole play with solar and all this stuff where they really haven't gotten that far with solar yet and with their power walls, right? And so, you know, if they if they grow those lines of businesses, and maybe you're right, but if they don't, and they're just an audio, auto manufacturer, then. Yeah, I, I think that they've decided they're not just an auto manufacturer. They, you know, they know that they are an energy future company that's trying to transform the world. They seem to be ahead of the game when it comes to the technology advancements. The things that they announced on Battery Day, I think, are revolutionary. Perhaps not as, you know, they did. They weren't as much cheerleaders for Tesla as the stock market wanted them to be. They didn't come out and talk about some of the use cases and some of the things that they see in the future. They basically were describing in intricate detail how a battery works and how they are going to cut the cost of the battery and make them more efficient and cheaper and easier to produce. And that is, you know, that, that in a nutshell is what that whole event was, but it was not talking about the, the brave new future of, you know, what this battery technology could mean that we were kind of hoping that they would say a little bit more about. And when they did get into it, they weren't cheerleaders. They weren't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing that you've got to look at with that presentation is that what it told investors is that they're going to spend the next two to three to ten years increasing capex, and really they're not going to get any, you know, big benefit from that stuff. I mean, for what five years or so, three, four years at the minimum before they actually start building any of this stuff. What so, does that remind you of, Jordan? No, I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. I just no, no, you no. Know. I know, I know. I'm not saying you do. I know you know right. that. I know you know that. But who does that remind you of, anyways? What do you mean? One, right? What? Well, what company ran with that model for a decade and a half? Well, we're Amazon. Gonna over, right? Amazon. We're going to overspend yeah. on cap. We're going to spend to be the biggest company yeah. 20 years from now, not two years years from now. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think so Elon I said it best when he, he said that we're, we, we know that every car maker is going to come up with an autonomous car. They're going to come up with an electric car that goes as, you know, long range. It's good. All of these technological milestones are going to be met by their competitors. What they want to be the best at is manufacturing. They want to, they want to be able to produce these things faster and cheaper than the others because they want to focus all of their energy on this capex, the spending up front, so that they can be the leader in the future where others are going to be kept trying to play catch up. That's at least the, the thesis. And that's the reason that, that I, you know, you're right. This is a long-term play. We're not going to see Tesla, you know, cranking out super cheap batteries overnight, but they have a plan and their plan is be the best at the engineering and the technology and hopefully change the world. Yeah, I don't agree with, I, I do agree with that. I just think that um, as far as valuation is concerned, they've gotten ahead of themselves if you compare them to Amazon at the same point in time in their, you know, in their company's history. So that's, you know, that's just where I'm at, right? Yeah, no, I get uh, it. And you're right. I did the same you're, thing. You're, you're, I sold, you're, you're I sold my Amazon stock in the 90s. Yeah. I, I should have just held on to that. It would have been the best investment in my portfolio. Oh yeah, I had I had a thousand shares at like three hundred and fifty dollars a piece, and sold those when they hit seven hundred. I was like, oh man, this thing's never gonna. It's never gonna come back. Yeah. <laughs> never gonna. Oh, yeah. I did. I doubled down, baby. Yeah. Doubled down at seven hundred, tripled down at twelve hundred, quadded down at fifteen hundred. <laughs> but you never know. I mean, I, I you know, I was a, I was an employee at Yahoo, which seemed like, oh, this is the this is the internet. They are the internet. And then out of nowhere, Google, out of nowhere beat them at their own game. Out of nowhere. You know, it, it, was, hey, it was a guys, slow 10-year progression. Guys, I think we need to get to the main thesis. And I want to just, before we talk about any stocks, I think it's really important for us to talk about scenario, the scenario modeling that precedes yes. our, our stock strategy, okay? So my thought is, and this is, this is starting now. We've been start talking about this all summer long. We think there will be a fall wave and a winter wave of the pandemic. Now, whether or not you believe that is going to happen is going to mark your strategy most likely for the fall and winter. So we come from a strong belief, I think all three of us, and let me know if I'm not speaking for you guys, uh, that it is inevitable, inevitable that we will get a spike uh, of the virus at some point in the next six to 12 weeks. How big that spike is, how deadly it is, how long it lasts, 
uh, is debatable. But I yes. think, in my opinion at least, it's inevitable that that spike comes. That's just the way viruses work. And um, it's something we've, truly, we, we knew that that was going to be the case. We know that the fall and winter is flu season. We know that that causes viruses to spread, just behavior. Even if people are more aware of things now and they are better at, they've, they've actually heard the word social distancing and they're wearing masks, we're still entering the season where viruses spread. Um, I would also make an assumption that based on what we've seen in the market the last, you know, six to seven months, that the market is not fully pricing in when these things happen. It kind of waits until they're actually happening uh, to have any reflection in, in equities, positive or negatively. So I don't, think, I don't think the market is really factoring in this thing yet because we're in a trough right now of the virus. And I think we've enjoyed it over the past couple months. People are getting back out into the world. People are going to restaurants, right? They're kind of starting to live their lives again. And it's really refreshing. And I think the human mind needs that. I think the human mind, it just needs to get out of that funk for some period of time. I do think the funk is going to come back. I don't know how severe it will be. But I think when it comes back, and this is what I want to go over today, when you start to see the numbers ticking up, and we'll show a graph in a minute about just the U.S., uh, the U.S. virus levels right now in terms of new cases, when it starts to tick up, there will be a major unknown. That unknown is how bad is this going to get? Uh, to what degree is this going to tick up and start to impact the hospital system? To what degree will people pull back uh, from the economy and stop going outside again? Okay, stop going to restaurants. At what to what degree will they stop doing all of those things? The market is not going to be able to answer that question in the first two to four weeks of the uptick. And I think that is the point in time when we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in the spring and then again at some, in the in the summer, which is winners and losers. Who are the winners? Who are the losers? The the obvious losers being. You know, we could talk about the travel stocks, right, the hospitality stocks, the restaurant stocks, you know, potentially Disney and SeaWorld and Six Flags, uh, potentially anything that's related to people doing stuff where they're intermingling with each other. OK, I want, I want to address one of one of the uh, comments that kept getting repeated in the uh, comments and then blocked by our awesome mods because it was repetitive. But um, Tommy the Hustler saying, this, none of you guys know what you're talking about when it comes to stocks. It's all luck. Now, there, there's, there's an element of truth. Nobody knows for a fact what's going to happen with stocks. We will all admit that. But our way of investing is taking the information we do have, trying to find an information edge of things that the market hasn't fully appreciated, things that hasn't fully been priced into the market, and trading on that information. It's, it's a simple concept. And you're right. None of us know. But it, it, is a, it is a formula that has had great success over a decade plus of us doing this. And it's enabled us this year alone to double our portfolios, which, you know, the market's up 50%, yes. but we, we're up 100%. Yeah, it's a really good point, right? You have, I mean, if you're going to be in the market, you have to have a system, right? And that this just happens to be the system that Chris kind of pioneered that we all um, follow. Um, but other people have different systems and some of them work to a greater or worse effect, right? Um, yeah, there's lots of different systems. I won't. I don't want to tout our own horns. About, listen, this is not about us. It's about social or uh, trading. This is what we are about. Kind of. The, this is this is the concept of trading that we structured and came up with 15 years ago. Um, I want to. I want to say something though. Not to tout our own horns. You know, my portfolio is one of the best performing portfolios of the past 15 years globally. Right over the past two decades, uh, there's probably you could look on two hands how many people have audited track record. Uh, I've generated uh, roughly 65% annualized returns every, you know, over the past 15 years. That's uh, 20,000 to 30 million over that time period in a uh, portfolio. Now I've taken some of that money out for taxes and life, of course, uh, but still sitting here today with you know over 20 in the portfolio that started with 20,000. So uh, it's it, it's a methodology that does work for us. Uh, it's why we built this community. I want to read a quote. 
This is a quote. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am featured. I'm one of five equity traders featured in Jack Schwager's new book, Unknown Market Wizards, coming out this November. He spent years looking for the top equity traders in the world that were off Wall Street. I'm one of the five. Uh, a quote that he is tweeting. He's tweeting out a quote every day for the next three months from the book. Uh, this is my quote, uh, and it's about social arb investing. I'm not trying to predict the future. I'm trying to accurately and quickly depict the present. I'm not trying to predict what people do, but rather identify what they are doing right now. And that really is the most misunderstood element of social arb investing. We're not futurists. We're not necessarily trying to predict the future. We're just trying to gauge what's happening right now. And if you have a better sense than others as to what's happening right this moment, then you'll have a better sense of being able to run the scenarios and associate uh, likelihoods with each scenario and then trade based on those likelihoods. That's what we do. OK, guys. Um, so, again, the scenario we're talking about today, and I'll throw it back to you guys, Jordan, Dave. It's all about do you agree that we feel the most likely, if not definite scenario, but a highly likely scenario that we're putting our chips on for the next 90 days is that the virus is going to come back. And when it comes back and starts to accelerate, it will be so that the market doesn't know how big or how bad or how long it's going to last. That will create uncertainty and that will create the market to pick winners and losers based on the knowns from earlier this year when we had the last outbreak. We had the initial outbreak. We had a second outbreak in the summer. And so what we need to think about is what are those trades right now? Let's either put them on a little bit now or be prepared to put them on if we see certain things happening. And we'll talk about what those things are. So, yeah, and, I mean, I, and I don't think that it's quite as clear that things are going to get worse. I mean, we, I think personally that things are going to get worse before they get better, right? I think that the fall is going to be a time when we see an up, upswing. We've already started to see it. This was my tweet this morning. Uh, this is this is you can't you know you can't look at that and say that the Dave, line isn't way, starting to go shame up. Shame on you! You know I have a website devoted to this. Oh, you do! <laughs> I stole this picture from something that Chris texted to me. So yes, it, shame My on bad. Chris. Let, let's blame it all. Could let's put the blame where it belongs. Dot com and uh, <laughs> see that you could have broken it down by any state or county. <laughs> With yeah. com, Jordan does have his own website built for yeah. tracking. Uh, the, the virus. <laughs> so uh, you're right. We should have pulled it from that one. But I do uh, know that the market doesn't like uncertainty. You know, I, like the, the market, right? the market doesn't like the direction that that's going, that there's so many things. I, I, I mentioned them up on at the top of the show. Th there's just too much going on that isn't good for the market. And much like the, you know, when we were sitting around, I was on vacation in Mexico wondering, do I need to get back and ordering a bunch of uh, toilet paper and paper towels to have shipped to my house for Chris to let in for me? Because I saw it going, I saw it in advance that this is going to get bad, right? And those, those moves made sense, both on the toilet paper front and on the things that I did to my stock portfolio. But in the meantime, I lost a million dollars, right? Just, just hesitating, I lost a million dollars and caught it, caught it as it was falling and was able to reverse that trend. Here we are again, I'm down a million dollars, right? And we've already started to see the market pull back. My biggest stocks, the tech stocks, the ones that have just been runaway successes, the ones that enabled me to have my portfolio do crazy multiples in the past two months, have in the past 40, 15 days pulled back. But they're but Dave, what happened the first time, right? Everything came down, remember? Everything, Everything came, down. came down. Yes. I was fortunate to be shorting the entire market back in March. And that was Everything the easy way to do down. it then. But then, but then, Dave, but then the market got smart and realized that, you know what, we shouldn't be, that was a gut reaction. And the reality is that Shopify is going to win here. Peloton's going to win. Amazon's going to win. Uh, Netflix is going to win. And so they figured out those stocks shouldn't be brought down. Now, I think the reason why tech stocks came down this time, it wasn't quite so much about fear of the pandemic getting worse come this fall and winter. I think that was just a total repricing. Uh, they got ahead of themselves. There's a rebalancing right going on. I think that was healthy and natural. And Dave, you know, we've done so well in those stocks this year. I mean, it just, it just is what it is. It is what right? it is. We try to time them perfectly every day. Yeah. I think for the, having a prepared mind right now is about the next move. 
And I truly think the next move that is big is likely to be related to the numbers getting worse with the virus and the pandemic. And then the fear associated with that. And people are going to have this instinctual reaction to be like, you know what? Let's not sell off Amazon this time. Let's not sell off Shopify. Let's not sell off Netflix. Let's not sell off Peloton. But let's sell off the airlines. Let's sell off the hotel companies, Booking.com, Expedia. Let's sell off the companies that we know if this is not going to be good for. I mean, one of my big shorts right now, Ruth Chris and David Busters, okay? Those are two shorts of mine. Uh, maybe some of the uh, you know apparel retailers that aren't as savvy with their e-commerce stores, right? Some of them are going to do well. Some are going to not going to do well. We all know now that Target and Walmart, right, they are here for this world, right? Because they have their e-commerce running like a well-oiled machine. Man, they responded really well, not just their e-commerce, but then incorporating, incorporating that with the in-store pickup. I mean, we yes. use them that once a week um, in but, the heat of this. It was awesome. But, but Jordan also staples. They, they do very well with staples, and then they can sell you other stuff on top of the staples. But you know who's not prepared for this mess? Ralph Lauren. Yep. Ralph Lauren has a terrible e-commerce biz, guys. In fact, if I were to think of a company that has one of the worst e-commerce businesses out there, it would be Ralph Lauren. So like that, I haven't shorted them yet, but again, I want to have a prepared mind for when I start to see the data tick up, I want to know what stocks I'm going to short, where I'm going to go long. So we'll, I mean, George, Dave, do you want to talk about what you think? Yeah, I think, I think part of the problem though with that, and, and I just pulled up Ralph Lauren because I hadn't even looked at that one, it did the big drop. It tried to come back, but it's, I mean, it's floundering. Like, how much lower can it go? What what kind of assets do they have? I mean, I mean, we have to start thinking about, like, what is their actual book value? And and can this I company go to I zero? Right? That. It can't. Hell no. I will never, ever, ever think about book value. <laughs> I will never look at the stock price. I know, I, I know you're playing devil's advocate here. But you know, as a social ARP investor, I will not look at that because today Ralph Lord is trading based on all the information known today. And if new information comes to light, that would be even worse for that company in three weeks. I see it trading lower, not higher. Okay. Yes. So, and, yeah, and you know, you I do just, throw out terms like that just to trigger you. I, I when I say book value, it's it's not because I'm actually going to be looking at book value. All right, Dave, you can look at all the energy stocks and see. I mean, we didn't think that they were going to trade any lower than they have been. And then the last, you know, 10 days or so when um, oil crude inventories have, you know, not depreciated as fast as we thought they were, those things have been tanking again. Yeah. 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 I, I, listen, you guys want to go. I'll start right here, guys. I'm telling you right now, I am shorting booking. I, I've already taken, just like last time, I'm, I'm, I'm putting toe in the water, toe in the water, right? So. I'm just starting some short positions. I, you know, I have been shorting Dave and & Buster's and Ruth Chris. I'm still shorting those companies. I added Booking.com as a short. Um, I did sell every single one of my travel names with the exception of Royal Caribbean because, you know, that's kind of our famous early call that cruisers are going to cruise. And I'm sticking with them just for fun. And it's, this it, yeah, you have, you have January calls. You probably are not going to do amazing in those. But I mean, you, well, I actually got rid of those. I just have I just have the stock now. Um, I think you kept the calls. I kept the calls because they're I, printed on a T-shirt. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I accidentally sold them, quite honestly. Uh, so I am preparing to short companies like Ralph Lauren, though. Um, I'm also shorting VF Corp, but I'm not. I'm not 100% sold on that. I might actually pull out of that short and cover it soon. But I was shorting it only because of vans doing poorly going into the back to school season, but I might cover that short soon. Uh, I am going to short uh, some of the other, potentially some of the other restaurant names and some of the other travel names like Expedia potentially. Uh, I, oh, I am shorting uh, American Airlines. I have, uh, two, I have 300 of the October 16th Put thirteen dollar put. Uh, I am shorting Southwest Airlines, um, and I'm shorting Booking.com with I have I think just ten of the seventeen hundred dollar puts. It's about uh, it's doing terrible. I mean that's a terrible position for me today. Uh, I've lost half my value in those. So again, these are just tips for my portfolio. Again, you got to remember the sizing, right? For the sizing of my portfolio, these are really really small entry level positions. And I'm tiptoeing my way in, and I will go in larger on these positions 
if I start to see the data getting worse on the pandemic, on the virus. Yep. Um, but by the way, I'm not, I'm keeping all my tech stock. I'm keeping all my defensive names. I'm actually adding uh, to names like this. Uh, I already said earlier in the episode, ammo sales are strong and getting stronger. Uh, the only risk factor there is if President Trump, it looks like he's going to get reelected, I'll probably start to sell off that position. I think that's a huge net negative uh, for gun and ammo stocks. So uh, I will keep all my defensive positions, all the positions that did well last time. I'll keep all my technology positions. Ones you guys both have, obviously Peloton, you know, Amazon, Shopify, DocuSign, you know, yep. Twilio. Uh, those are all positions I'm going to keep through this, even though it could be painful for a day or two. I think in general, the market is going to wise up and realize that these are not stocks that they need to be concerned about with the data getting worse on the virus. What about so names that, that like that Zoom strategy. that seem to be synonymous with people are staying at home, yet the stock is yeah. already at a crazy high price? I know you don't look at price, but is yeah. Zoom something that you would be buying right now? Yeah, so I still have my Zoom. And again, Zoom is a company that if you were thinking about price and book value and PE and all that stuff, you would have sold Zoom 250 points ago, okay? So like, for that reason and that reason only, I'm not letting price impact my decision on Zoom. I'm letting the scenario model my position. So I will say this, if it looks like the uh, we're not going to get a, 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 an increased pandemic scenario this, this next quarter, and for some reason, the numbers just pick up and they never go up. I don't know how that's possible, but that happens. I will be rushing out of companies like Zoom. I will be out of those companies so quickly. In fact, even Peloton, my favorite number one company, I will temporarily buy insurance for like a 90 day period to protect my, because my Peloton position is 3.2 million. Okay. If, if it starts uh, to I, look like people I, are going to be leaving the house more than we think they're going to be leaving the house, it, that's a time to look at, at insurance against some of the stocks, even if you love them long term, like Peloton, yes. as a potential like, well, I just need to have some puts just just in case, right? Well, I'm, just I'm the sorry. trade, right? You've got to protect yourself against that outflow trade, even that's though you right. well, Peloton short term or long term. That's exactly right. By the way, I'm also shorting uh, Planet Fitness. I've been shorting them all week, um, trying to find them. I don't know how that's doing today. But uh, yeah, so, so it's just very obvious. These guys, you don't have to get fancy here with this trade. You know, normally our social arb trades are all about, you know, finding uh, a needle in the haystack, right? The off-radar data related to propane or related to the Netflix show Home Edit that is causing sales, we think, at, you know, to the container store to surge. This trade is not about that. This trade is just trying to stay a step ahead of the big massive market move that would potentially come with the data starting to accelerate on the virus. That's it. We don't have to get fancy. Just stick with what worked last time is what I'm going to do, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Yeah. That's it. Hopefully I can do it a day early. I can do it an hour early. Maybe I'll do it two or three days earlier than the market. But an hour to a day or two makes all the difference right here. Now, we'll, we won't know if we're right about this thesis for another couple months, right? Two, two and a half months. But this is our thesis. This is what this episode is about. Uh, right or wrong, this is our strategy going into the fall as it relates to the overall market. And it's going to be a really tough one to trade, guys. I mean, we're not even talking about, you know, we did a few election episodes. We're going to, like, end up. This is independent of election stuff, right? Do you agree? Like, we can't start inter intermingling this stuff. That's a different trade, a different set of elements. This is just based on, I think, am I crazy? Do you guys agree that the number one thing for the next 30 days or 25 to 30 days is whether the virus gets worse or evens out or better? Like, is that? I think that has, yeah, that's number one. It does affect other things. It does affect, you know, whether or not stimulus happens is an, an effect That's what of I was the say. I virus. Mean, I think sti stimulus is really number one right now, especially with the um, with the uh, uh, initial jobless claims climbing uh, for the first time this morning. Uh, that was, so, Jordan, uh, what's the scenario on stimulus, though? Is, I've been looking for it. Is there actually a scenario that could play out with stimulus? Because I haven't found it. Yeah, I mean, any, at any time, right? I mean, we know that the Fed is willing to print the money. Um, now, is the federal government willing to put that money to work, right? And so that's the, 
That's the question. So you're talking about Fed, not not fiscal then. Not not fiscal, but Fed stimulus. The Fed stimulus can't happen. I think it's the fiscal. Well, the Fed can only do so much, right? So the the Fed can only you know create money or buy assets. Um, and so if they create the money, like I said, they could buy the assets or they could end up um, sending it out to um, Americans. But they can't do that. The federal government has to do that um, fiscally, right? And they can take they can borrow that money from the Fed. Um, which right now doesn't seem like they're going to do, but that could change. But by the way, guys, there's still people in the comments that are asking us, would you buy or, or short the SPY? I don't think you're understanding what we're saying. We're not trading the broad market as one. We are trying to pick the winning and losing sector based on the scenario we think is most likely to play out or be prepared to play that play out, which, right? So which is a little bit different than the first time around. So the first time around, we actually were... Yeah buying and selling more shorting the SPY because that was the quick and easy way to like slam on the emergency brake from our portfolios falling out of the sky, right? That that helped us and yes. that that's that's one of the things that was very useful. But now I think that what we've been saying is the market has gotten smarter. The market has realized that you're not just going to sell everything. There are ones that are going to do better and ones that are going to do worse. And it's it's our job to pick those. It's our job to say, yeah, I think that Amazon is a company that is going to continue to do well, even if they start spending more money and it costs them more money to do business in this time. It's something that it's it's long term. It's a company that that you want to be in, but. Booking.com is not. Booking.com is dependent on people actually making bookings. And if people need to start booking less, and if uh, Thanksgiving becomes a Zoom holiday this year, it's it's not going to benefit booking, but it might benefit Zoom, right? Yeah, and I think that's a good point, Dave. I think, you know, we think about Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving and, and you know, Christmas and all the holidays that we celebrate here in, in America, I, I think a lot of these will be close family and maybe close friends, uh, not a lot of, not a tremendous amount of travel, uh, potentially some driving travel, but not a lot of plane travel. Uh, certainly, I know one of the reason why I'm shorting Ruth Chris is because I believe that, you know, a lot of the restaurant business, I own a restaurant, as you know, and a lot of our business come November and December is about events, it's about corporate events and holiday events. We are running events on it. This, people wouldn't believe this. We have an event every single day for a month straight. Some days we have two events. So we might run 40, 50, 60 events. And that's just us. Like there are steak restaurants. Like people love, you know, a lot of corporates, they love having their stuff at big steak dinners. Um, they could lose 80, 90% of that business this year. And I think that's just a, just a net negative. Although I will say I tweeted same store sales guy, uh, who's kind of like, one of my go-to people on Twitter for tracking same store sales of restaurants. And he had seen that there's a few different Ruth Chris's that are doing okay. He thought they were actually doing pretty good. And he thinks because of the independent uh, steak places going down, they might ultimately pick up some of that business. And I kind of agree with him, except that I don't think that plays out in the short term. In the short next 90 days, I think stuff gets ugly in America. And Ruth Chris, now the Ruth Chris is global, of course, but if stuff gets ugly here, I just think no one's doing events at steak restaurants, right? No, no corporates. It, it se that That's seems like a very logical one to me that that Ruth Chris is is a hard business to continue to sustain. Yeah, maybe, maybe Ruth Chris gets some like date night business, but since they're not doing that corporate business, that's where they get the big checks, right? Where they're buying the five hundred dollar bottles of wine. And if you don't do that. Do they have? I don't, and I should have checked this out. I don't believe they have patios in any of the restaurants. If they do, I can't imagine it's very many. The ones that I know of, no, like, it seems like a dark, dark uh, steakhouse vibe. You know, it's a dark, dark yeah. indoor, musky old style place. Yeah, I don't want to eat a steak outside. I want to <laughs> eat it like in a stuffy, weird. You want, you want to travel back to the sorry. '70s to eat your yeah. steak. <laughs> I want wood on the on all the uh, on all the walls, maybe the ceilings. Hey, um, so did someone just put a comment that Portnoy just, I can only see half the comment. So he just sent a video out 20 minutes ago and took credit for something. Is he taking credit for our propane thing again? I think he, no, he was, said, was, I, from what I've been gathering, he said that he didn't even trade SPH, but that other people are saying that they stole it, which is us. Oh, he's that, referring that to other people as us them? or us as other people now? I don't think he's referring to us. I think he's referring about us, but not directly. Well, at least we're Maybe on his radar.
That's all I care about. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> hey, listen, the, the, the reason why we like poking uh, Portnoy's thumb is because he does have a big following, and our goal is to democratize investing. We, we love what he's doing for the whole investment community, bring more people online. Uh, we would like to see those people actually pick up a strategy that, you know, will actually help them long term beyond years like 2020. And, and obviously, uh, we believe in social arb. So the more we can spread the word about social arb and build this community, the better. Uh, it, 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 that's it. Uh, so, uh, but yes, if you're on Twitter, tweet them and let them know where this thing started. Tweet out our video. Our video is on what, the Dumb Money uh, Twitter channel. Tweet Portnoy, tweet Barstool, let them know where this whole thing started. And There's we a, love that hashtag, we are dumb money, hashtag right? Hashtag we hashtag are dumb money. money. That's that's what we're going to start yeah. uh, using so that we can, we can find comments that people are making about us. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing that on ours too. I, I still haven't done it, but hashtag we are by dumb money. By the way, he's not really insulting any of the three of us by saying that because it wasn't really – the idea originated in our community, not with us. Like I did not originate – the propane trade. None of us did. Like that was out of our community that that was originated. So there's you guys bar still. They're trying to steal it from you guys. Okay, you own it. We are dumb money. Let them know. We are okay? all dumb money. So Chris, I need to remind you to stop bouncing your camera because people are saying it's oh, terrible. Sorry. They also are saying that when I talk, sorry. it's echoing because. We apologize. Chris somehow broke his camera once again and doesn't know how to connect it to a computer. So um, we're going to do our best to get that. But he's on vacation next week and we'll be... You Did you break your newsman uh, uh, speaker thing too? Well, he can't use it when he's on his uh, iPad. Well, I, don't, I don't wear that on my iPad. So, yeah. so we're going yeah. to work all of that out. But uh, next week he'll be doing this from uh, New York on a bouncy laptop. So bear with us. I, ca I can't add image stabilization in post. <laughs> But anyway, I think that we should at this point bring on the guest because I'm sure he has opinions on all of this. Um, yes. and, and many of you are very familiar with him. He's in the chat. He's been chatting up a storm here today. Nolan Antonucci is um, is one of our, like, I, I don't know. I think he found us because he was looking for people who trade on Google Trends. And he has a background in that. And we're going to hear about his strategy and his way of doing things. So let me uh, just pull up some uh, technology. Hey, hey here. Nolan, what's up, man? Okay. If... Hey, Chris. How we doing, Hello. guys? Let me make Chris, sure you're he on the air. He's Hang not on. on. One sec. Wait, is he there on? we go. There we We've go. Got there him. we go. Now you're off, buddy. Show it. First of many, 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 because dumb money is not about us. It's about all of us, dude. And Nolan, we're so proud of you. Thanks for everything you're doing in, in the Discord. And just tell us, man. Marketing. So it's an agency where uh, they're all buying ads on Google and Amazon. Um, so I've been able to see kind of the impact on Google Trends data for um, our, our clients. Um, and kind of working in reverse, I started to see some, some of the stock opportunities. So, yeah, it was pretty clear that uh, Shopify, a company that I could see um, my clients transitioning to Shopify back three or four years ago, um, that same adoption of leaving the old Yahoo stores, the old uh, WooCommerce stores, going to Shopify um, at a greater rate than they were going to Magento. And sure enough, I found the Google Trends confirmation there, and then I kind of looked for a guru, and uh, I, I came across your Bloomberg uh, video there. Um, we talk about the Hunger Games, and I think that's when I got the book and things like that. Oh, well, that's an oldie, man. That's from like 10, 12 years ago. Wow. That's wow. definitely what started it for me. So, so tell us about like what you're doing in the community. Can you kind of walk us through what you do that is differentiated? Because I've seen some of the, the ways that you are looking at, call them tags for, for, for search traffic. You really have, you know... A, 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 a precise approach to it. Could you walk us through that? And then Dave, I know maybe we could even pull up some of his examples from Discord. And he, like our first guest came so prepared, he actually sent over like graphics for us. <laughs> I love it. Oh, talk talk about that fantasy baseball. This is so cool. Do you know, and you're, you're from uh, Boston, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Do you know that one of my first uh, guys that worked for me with the social arb was, you know, do you remember the movie Moneyball? Um, it's, it's the, yeah. A, yeah, well, there were three in there on my on my tag. I mean, that was kind of what also the idea of arbitrage, the idea of valuing something differently than what the actual true value is. So Moneyball, they undervalued not making it out. So getting a walk. Um, so I think the same thing where you were trying to 
find the value disparity between you're at a, uh, a garage sale, they maybe understand the value of furniture, they don't understand the value of, of tools, of cards, of baseball cards. Um, so only way for the athletics to have a shot is to understand that arbitrage as well for them. So, you know, there were three data assistants on that team during Moneyball, and I think they featured one of them in the movie Moneyball. Matthew uh, was one of the three. He read my book, found me, flew to Dallas to meet with me, spent two years studying social arb uh, uh, strategy, ended up opening up his own hedge fund, right? And this is the Moneyball guy. This is so cool. Uh, ran the hedge fund for a little bit. He's back in doing other stuff now in law, but he still actively trades uh, using social R. But he was like literally the money ball guy uh, from back in the day. So it was, it was a really cool story. When I saw that, I'm like, small, small world. Yeah, I did not know that that piece of the story there, but obviously curious to hear kind of his some of his thoughts more. Maybe he'd be a better guest than me to have on here. After. No, man, this is great. You're doing it great, dude. Can you can you show us some of your stuff? Like, Dave, can we make, sure. like tell us which one to pull up from Discord, and we'll go over a couple examples of how you're approaching this world differently. Yeah, and you're, yeah. I mean, I've been seeing the chat interest on. I mean, the Square one as well as Peloton. Um, so I, I've been trying to tag my my Google Trends charts as a way to revisit them to see if my thesis is still intact. Um, so again, a, a core part of why I'm in my my Square position is that I think the adoption of Cash App is outpacing the adoption of Venmo. Um, so when you start signing up for Cash App, you probably check is which one's my routing number, which one's my banking number. So if I'm seeing Cash App routing outpacing Venmo routing, I think there's an indicator that there's more likely people adopting Cash App at a greater rate than which they're adopting Venmo. Um, so again, trying to get through the clutter of just the, the, the individual term of Cash App and figure out is there some sentiment? And you talk about that with, with Google or on, on Twitter, actually checking the, the story behind the trend um, and trying to see, are there some that are, there's enough volume to kind of show the actual trajectory of this um, there. So again, I, I GOTR, the ticker symbol, and then I've been trying to kind of log them as a way to revisit the positions that I, I have higher conviction in. So basically anybody that goes into our Discord, they simply just type GOTR and then the symbol if they're looking for a specific symbol, or they can just do GOTR to see everything that you're doing. Yeah, and I encourage that. See, a few people have been also kind of doing it as well. Um, so again, it takes a little extra time to copy paste the link. Um, I have, I've heard that on iPhone, sometimes they pull out the space. Uh, Mind Like Water was kind of showing me that one as a Discord member who's been really helpful for the community there. Um, cool. but, but yeah, as a way to try to, to see how they're doing, um, kind of revisit the positions ease more easily. I mean, I've had spreadsheets in the past, but I end up not checking the, the trends chart with much regularity as I probably should to have um, kind of some outsized positions that I do have. Well, and doing it on something like Discord keeps you accountable too, because once you've thrown it out there for the world and tagged it, everyone's kind of following what you're doing, which is what I love about our community. <laughs> Absolutely. Can you can you talk about? Um, I know you were using some interesting combinations with like login, and talk to us about how how you the value you found in the in just the additive word login. Yeah. So, I mean, again, my background is e-commerce specifically. So, um, and, but same thing for apps too. And a position I have is, I don't think it's as much for, for Tinder, but like Tinder login, I guess people do it on their phone. But for Amazon is the more pure one. People are actually searching Amazon login. They're probably looking to log into their own Amazon account. Uh, you guys brought up that chart there. Um, so that's something I, I've been following. There's definitely a number of other instances. Uh, again, Mind Like Water was seeing that for this I don't know, we're, we're in the community, they're trying to vet other companies that way. So it's been really cool, other people saying company name plus the word login to say, hey, this isn't just people searching about Teladoc, but it's Teladoc and login or whatever it ends up being. Yeah, it, that that's, guys, this is so important. And, and I, I appreciate you sharing this with our community. I, we call them, you know, one thing that you'll read about, uh, for any of y'all that end up getting Jack Schwager's book, The New Market Wizards, Unknown Market Wizards, he really dives deep in his interview with me about my use of tags, right? He was really curious about how we come up with certain tags for discovery, to how to surface change, right? And, and I, I didn't give everything away in the interview, but I, I did discuss the, the concept of what I call an umbrella tag. And this is a little different from Google, Nolan, uh, because you know Google Trends allows us to get an insight into the window of what people are searching for. But you can utilize the same concept 
to on Twitter by just typing word combinations into twitter.com and then actually looking at latest, not top, but latest to see the full scope of what people are saying by adding different word combinations. And I have what I call umbrella tags and umbrella tags are kind of discovery words that will allow me to identify what people are talking about as it relates to a certain subject matter. So I might have, you know, the word, you know, video game, you know, wait list or something. I'm just making that up, like some yeah, combination down. of words. So that's how we surface what it is that people are talking about to begin with before we then go to the next level, which is what Nolan's kind of talking about. Of Okay, now that we know something is interesting, now let's go deep into the search characteristics. Let's compare it to known benchmarks. No, I'm sure you do this, right? It's really important not just to look at the search traffic for a word combination, but to compare that to a known benchmark. It doesn't help us if, what's this new movie that's out right now, Social Dilemma, right, on Netflix? Like, it doesn't help us to see that there's a huge spike for people talking about the Social Dilemma. I don't like the movie, by the way. We should talk about that in this, this episode. But I'm like one of the only people that don't like the movie. It only helps us to understand what that spike is relative to other known benchmarks like the kissing booth or the I like I don't know other big other big Netflix movies right that had come out and that's a, probably a bad example I don't know why I said kissing booth <laughs> but I was gonna say I mean I think two examples that again both community based ones that came up for me uh, they're kind of smaller companies but we talked about the Durrell Juvenile so seeing kind of the bikes plus the word sold out. Um, kind of identifying that sooner. I mean, we got in pretty early, or at least I got in pretty early on that one, and I, I still am I'm in there looking at that, but seeing that there is still trends around the word sold out plus Cannondale or whatever other bike brands they own. I think the arbitrage component is that they own the big the big player in Brazil too. So they're actually, Bicicleta is also kind of seeing Google trends and sold out. Again, I, if anyone can translate Portuguese, um, you can see the trends on that too. But um, yeah, the other one is, is, it's a smaller one, I don't want to, but the, the big five sporting goods too. Um, seeing sold out, it's kind of an alternative to them. Obviously, it's a little different than the Academy Sports and things like that. But there was a tweet that sold kind of, why is everyone coming in here to buy guns back in March? And, and um, so to be able to, again, put the context as to why there's a trend around it to work in reverse. Um, I definitely, that's an important part of it there. It's connecting those dots. It's like, it's like seeing something in social, seeing that one tweet that you happened to see when you were, you know, looking for something else, you're, you're looking for sold out and you saw that one tweet, tweet about guns, made the connection and then started more an in depth search into that and saw if there was other data that backed it up. And, and that's where the discovery comes from. That and places like Discord, which is, which is I think the, like the biggest revolution in our way of thinking is now having other people thinking that way that are sharing the information and giving everybody that kind of social edge. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, anything right now uh, that you're looking at that's that's new? Maybe something that you haven't made a decision on, but you're just kind of keeping an eye on. Or I've been I've been heavily scaling my Peloton position um, as well. That's my third highest position. So it's Shopify and Amazon with my e-commerce background. I, I still very much believe that um, there's arbitrage in in terms of their ability to grow over the next ten years as as international. Um, I guess associated with that, I've also been um, scaling my position for that. Um, it's called C Limited, the one that owns Shopee, which is kind of the of Southeast Asia, the uh, Amazon of Southeast Asia. So looking at their adoption versus, I think it's called Lazada, which is the, the Tencent owned um, version there to kind of see, are they outpacing their competitor? So again, using Google Trends to tell their story, but is it going at a faster rate? Um, and so again, I know there was the news on Peloton with that knockoff Amazon bike. Um, the Amazon, the Echelon company made the Amazon Prime bike and it ended up being kind of false news. Which um, but I just still wanted to see is is the word um, Peloton instructors versus Echelon instructors. Are these guys even on the radar? Um, and Google Trends show that the answer is no there. So um, again, using Google Trends as a way to gauge the relative volume versus the other other one there. So it's been really I've just been kind of getting higher conviction in the positions I have. Um, but I've also kind of dedicated a, a probably about twenty five percent of my portfolio for kind of shorter term positions. I'm not in the propane one yet, but um, I, everything seems to be pretty intact what I'm seeing. Dude, I, I'm so I'm so happy to have you as part of our community. I mean, Nolan's one of the guys that when I'm on Discord, I will look to see what he is saying, right? Um, 
And now you guys know to look for him. <laughs> and he's found a way to make it easier to find him with Google Trends, abbreviated as GOTR. I love that. I mean, and that's, and we also have all of the um, stocks in their own little rooms. The ones that we, that, you know, that we have a lot of, you know, people talking about, they get their own little room and it's like, it's, it's amazing when you're trying to validate your research or see something that somebody else is, is doing. Now we're going to put you on the spot. Is there anything that you're uh, working on that you haven't yet surfaced in the community? Is there, what, what, what is the, the thing that you haven't yet gone public with? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been kind of in the back of my mind, I'm wanting to do videos, whether it's for my e-commerce, kind of what are the best practices of that versus what are the best practices of, of, of this. So this is kind of, I've, I've already created one video for it. I created a GOTR investing awesome. YouTube channel. It's got one whole video on it. So, uh, yeah, there. Um, um, but I threw it together or, before this one to at least kind of hold myself accountable. But here. hopefully I'll make a video once a week, maybe more. Um, I have a Love few it. coworkers too that are also doing kind of cool stuff. So again, we're all in the search marketing realm, so our brains are trained on, on Google Trends. So I've created a quick video. So uh, a, a like, a subscribe, whatever you can do there. Um, hey, uh, we'll you, you, uh, you've already doubled your subscriber about, count since this morning. Uh, I, I noticed <laughs> when, when I looked at this this morning, you had one sub, and now you have two. So congrats yeah, on that. Let's, get, let's get in some subs, man. You, you deserve <laughs> it. And by the way, I invested in SE based on your research. And I do want everyone to know, when we, obviously, your focus is, is a lot of G-Trend data. You know, me and Jordan, we spent five years meeting with the biggest funds in the world and, and helping them understand how to utilize Google Trend data as well as Twitter data and other conversational data sources. It would blow your mind that the biggest hedge funds in the world, the, some of the smartest people I've ever met, are clueless how to use Google Trends the right way. And on the sell side, I work with the largest sell side analyst on Wall Street again kind of educating them and consulting them of how to use it and not use G-Trend data. Guys, if you get even slightly good at these data sources, you will be better than anyone who works on Wall Street. So um, this is a huge opportunity to differentiate your research. And guess what? It's completely free. You don't have to pay a subscription fee for it. And it's one of the world's largest data sources. It might be the world's largest data source, right? Like it's 85 to 90 percent of the world's search traffic it's incredible yeah. so thank you nolan for coming on man it's really cool appreciate it thanks oh, guys God. that's awesome and we do definitely want to do that more um so if you are a part of our discord community um and you have people that you follow people that you're always searching for let us know there's a room set up i'm not sure exactly what it is but i'm sure one of our mods will uh will put it down in the screen about uh, 10 seconds from now um Nominate someone. Who should who should we put on? And I'd like to circle back with Nolan and have him back on again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, thank you, Nolan. That was awesome. Thanks, buddy. Uh, we we do have to still talk about the investment that you and I made, Chris and I invested yes. in a startup. You know that our original channel, Dumb Money, is all about startup investing and looking for interesting investment opportunities, startups that we um, that we can get behind, that we can get to know the founders, help them grow their business. Um, there's there's one that's that's a little further along than some of the early, early stage investments that uh, we're involved in. It's a finance, fintech, finance technology uh, company. Do you want to talk a little about it, Chris? And oh, by the way, the reason I'm talking yeah. to Chris is because Jordan was presented this opportunity and passed. So that's kind of how we work is, is we each vet these ideas and decide whether or not we want to be in them. And Chris and I were a go on this one and and Jordan was a no. And if you're yeah, interested, so, after he tells you about it, I can tell you why I didn't invest. Chris didn't seem to be interested yesterday. But I want to. I want to know why. I, no, I definitely want to know why. <laughs> I, I, I am a guy. Yeah, like as an investment, quite honestly, I didn't spend a tremendous amount of time, uh, you know, vetting this one uh, because I'm so. In, and that's why we haven't made a lot of startup investments this year because we're so involved with trading public markets. But this came to us through a friend. Uh, in the kind of financial YouTuber community, I call them and you know we've always wanted to work with this person, so he gave us an opportunity, and we wanted to support him, and uh, we put a little money behind it. It's it's a bank, right? So it's a bank, yes. And the concept it's a, it's a it's different a kind bank. of bank. it's a non bank. It's a non bank. A non bank. Okay, fine. It's a non bank. Okay, so whatever. Okay, so sorry. Not a non bank. Now here's the thing. So people spend such an insane amount of money on the lottery, right? insane amount of money people are willing 
to gamble their money, but for some reason they're not willing to save their money. So they're really, and the people that play the lottery are the people that are saving the least and probably the people that need to save the most. So they're trying to fix that problem in a really creative way. And part of the reason why I invest in this company is has nothing to do with whether or not it's a good investment. But it's an app it's that encourages savings. It's an app that rewards good behavior. Yes. And I love that. I, I, I think that is that's a really cool thing. So, you know what? Like, I just wanted to support this company because I feel like people need to be doing this. And so they've developed a way that you can save money, right? And at the same time, part of that money goes into a lottery. So you get the same kind of psychological uh, benefit of knowing that you could win big with this lottery yeah. system, the same way you would play in the regular lottery, except the majority of your money is being saved, right? So they give you the savings, plus they have a lottery component. And, and man, if everybody that played the lottery did this instead, yeah. we would have a lot of people uh, that who are a lot more financially secure. I just think it's really cool, but I didn't spend much more time than that. Yeah, and, and what I like company. about it, like like so. you're saying, it, it incentivizes people to save money, which is good. It does put it into an FDIC insured account, just like a, uh, a, a checking account, savings account kind of thing. But we all know that interest rates have gone to zero. The Fed has said we're not going to raise interest rates for years. So that means your traditional bank's savings account, checking account, has almost zero incentive, like 0.001% interest does not pay. But if you could take those, that, that little bit of interest and buy lottery tickets with it is essentially what this is. Instead of giving you that interest rate, they're going to give you the ability to win $10 million, right? So if you haven't guessed by now, you may have heard other YouTubers talking about it already. The company is called Yatta Savings. If I can... Yeah, and, here. and here's the cool part. Uh, so as you guys know, if anyone that follows our channel, we don't make money off this channel, right? So we don't do paid sponsored stuff. Uh, that's just not part of who we are. We don't need to do that. And uh, so we're not doing it. But this company uh, offered us kind of a sponsorship to do something. We said, well, why don't like we think it's a good thing for people to potentially do and check out. Why don't we at least expose this to our community and any money we end up making off this and we can't go yeah. into you there, know how we make money basically off like any kind of like, any kind of program there's an affiliate link kind of thing a referral code that if you use dumb money as your referral code uh they give us compensation and we're not planning to keep that money we're planning to give it back to the community and we have some ideas about that already but we're still kind of working through what we want to do yeah, I think my idea, because the way that this deal is structured, we won't get the money for a very, very long time, and it might not be much, but it could be a bunch. We want to start doing this occasionally and putting the money into, like, a dumb money community fund, like, fund, like, or just earmark that for a dumb community fund, and then use it for, like, an annual event, which would be really yeah. cool. People have said, like, oh, what if you guys, we did an annual meetup in We've Vegas wanted to do that anyway, like that, right? and this, this might be the way yeah. to fund it, because we, this channel doesn't make money. We do this because we love it. And we don't plan to like use this as a money. We want to make our money the old fashioned way by investing. And we hopefully <laughs> will make money by being investors in this company, this Yada savings startup. But if you use our code, if you, if you sign up because you saw it here, just know that we're going to do our best to eventually take all of that money and do something cool it would be a free event. We're not going to ever have a seminar that you have to pay to go see, but some free way to do something out in the real world with real people. And if we're ever allowed to do that again, have a, have a dumb money meetup of some sort. Yeah. So, so Dave, it's free to do this, right? Is it like it's free, free to, to, yeah, it's like, free to sign up. Um, and you basically get, uh, entries into the uh, lottery kind of system thing that they have going. They, they do these number drawings. I, I really don't even know enough about the mechanics, but if you use our code, I know that you get some free entries. And then if you put, I think you get an entry for every $25 you deposit into their account. Uh, I'm just going to pull it up and actually read it off the screen because I don't uh, know all of the details. What is the code, Dave? What's our code? It's dumb, dumb money. money. One word, dumb money. 
So is that like a promo code that they yeah, put in? Yeah, I, I went through up? yesterday and signed up myself. And as a part of the sign up uh, on the app, you go to the app store, just download the Yata app, and um, it asks for your email address, a password, and an optional referral code. And ours is one word: dumb money. Dumb money. So guys, I mean, yeah, like please use it, and and uh, it's going to be a while before we see anything from this with the way the deal structure. But, but let us know in the comments if, if you them. um if you do sign up and if you, you actually have a chance to win real money. They apparently are doing drawings, and you get uh, for every twenty five dollars you save, you get a reoccurring ticket. It's not just a one time thing, but if if you keep your money in the account like a savings account, incentivizing you to keep it in there, you get a uh, a ticket for the weekly drawing. If you deposit $50, you get two tickets every week without needing to make new deposits. You can withdraw your funds at any time, up to six times per month, because that's kind of how savings accounts are structured. Uh, they have a $10 million in weekly number draws. The more you match, the more you win. So basically, how are, you, you pick your numbers, and if they match, you win money. And they, they I saw somewhere on here they had like a leaderboard. Um, so they actually are giving a 0.2% interest rate uh, as a savings bonus and a prize value of up to $10 million. Cool. I mean, I think it's, it's just it's such a cool, cool thing. It's think. free, pay nothing, no minimums, no reason not to try it out. And if you do, promo code dumb money. Yeah, small it was a small investment was. for us, but it's a fun one. And I think it's one, I like investing in things that, and this is another thing we talk about. Like part of the reason why I love investing in Tesla is honestly, I think I'm going to do well. In, I mean, I've done very well in Tesla, but I think I'll do be better in Tesla over time as well. But I like supporting companies that I think support where I want our future to go, right? Like I, I think if a company can kind of make money, but also do something that's a net positive in some yeah, way for a culture, that society, That incentivizes people, the way that we would like people to think, you know? We love people watching yeah, our channel I because think, we are giving you ways to think about money. And this app to me is just a natural fit for, you know, the idea of encouraging savings and giving you a fun way to do it. That actually is a higher yielding thing than uh, putting your money in a 0.01% savings account. I saw someone in the yeah, comments who's already know. doing doing it. And uh, they said they, I think, got like 2.5% on average because they've uh, won some money too. That's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, how, how do they make money, Dave? I, I don't know. I assume that like like Robin Hood, they just want I'm sure it's... I think the value of... Yeah, what? I'm sure it's... I, and I don't know specifically because, you know, I don't read all the uh, contracts that come my way, but I signed them by clicking on my DocuSign. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, really sure, but I'm sure it has to do with the fact market. that they, they have money yeah. in, in the account and they are able to invest it or earn more money than yeah. they end up paying out in prize money. And it's, right. it's really about having any type of financial relationship in 2020 with a, especially with a young Gen Zer or younger millennial is highly valuable, which is a little bit of the rate. Uh, they'd like to make money, but ultimately having four, five, 10, 20 million accounts, 30 million accounts with people uh, over a period of time uh, is becomes an asset that's valuable. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't get too into the business model guys because it just wasn't that big of an investment for me, quite honestly. And I, and I was investing because I like what they're, what they're building and what they're doing for people. I didn't really analyze it as the, for the investment piece. Itself. Once I actually analyze it, I do plan to make a video about it on the, Hey there, Dave here channel. So, um, I will, I'll figure out exactly what I, what I fully think about it and, uh, subscribe over there if you haven't already. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, what what else what else have we got going? Oh man, we've gone longer than I, you know. I part of the reason why I got to go is I told you I am I'm leaving uh, to visit family, and we are. I have someone staying at my house here to look after our cat. That's why it's such an expensive vacation because I have to have a full time person in my home uh, looking after our kitties. Didn't we invest uh, so, in a company that does cat sitting on the original yeah, channel? Yeah, but then I have someone random coming in and out all day i'd rather just have someone i know staying here which is just it's just easier but uh yeah so we'll, we'll, there'll be i'll have some interesting landscapes uh next week uh we have a house in montauk it's uh kind of overlooking the ocean so it should be pretty cool uh and you guys will see that if you dial in on monday for monday's show but uh that's it guys anything else today i don't know i think i think that's I mean, we covered a lot, well, I, and we were on for even longer than we thought because we were trying to make this quick because Chris has to pack. <laughs> I do have to pack. 
you have to pass. So, go go hit that like button as, as you uh, as you're uh, on your way out the door. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell if you're not already. You need to do that so that you know when we're on. Subscribe to my other channel. Hey there, Dave here for that uh, Yada update. Listen to our podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok if you want to do that. Uh, we're going to start posting like little snippets that might be able to keep your attention for 15 seconds on on that platform. Uh, we keep the conversation going here in the chat. Uh, after this is a replay, uh, if you want to, you can also join our Discord, dumbmoney.tv slash Discord. That's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dave Twitter. for Chris. Don't forget our again? Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Follow at, us on at Twitter. Jordan, at Dave Hansen, at Chris Camillo. Did you already say that? I, I don't Nobody remember else. if I did or not, but um, there's our... Yeah. There, uh, that, that was not at all the screen I wanted to go to. TV. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Monday. Mm.